Now, this time, let's talk about comparing two means from dependent samples. So, for example, we would like to determine the productivity before and after of employees after a change in their workstation layout, or the before and after reading speeds of individual participants in the speed reading course. If you want to per usually compare before and after or from two different times from just one single data set, then we might be comparing dependent samples and hence we do a pair of dependent samples. Yes. So, so let's now go to Excel to perform the test. So a sample of nine local banks show their deposits in billions of dollars. So this is less than point forty two billion dollars and this is sixty point six nine billion dollars. The years ago and then their deposits billions of dollars today. At alpha equals zero point zero five, can it be concluded that the average in deposits for banks is greater today than it was two years ago? So it was repeated, but this alpha equals zero point zero five. So these came from just nine same banks, but since they're dependent, ah, uh, uh, sorry. Nine same banks, but we have two different data sets. The one from three years ago and the one from today. So, let's now use this of dependent. We are assuming that they're normally distributed, by the way. So now, let's perform the t-test. This t-test does not require the f-test. If you're going to go to data analysis, you can clearly see that this t-test pair two sample means. So, no need to do the f-test. Immediately, we can go to the test. So let's go to that. And we don't now usually care which is which. So uh, we can choose any. It's just that let's make it, uh, let's make what we call this. Let's make it consistent with what we have. Now, in the problem, it did say that the claim that the average for deposits in the banks today. If this was mentioned first, so that means we would have to write it down that the mean for today is greater than the mean three years ago. So here, we can use the mean for today as variable one. Now, if we don't mind that and we want uh, the mean for the data set for three years ago as variable one, then we would have to follow that the mean for three years ago is written first. Hence, this becomes the claim. So we have to be very careful with that. So for consistency purposes, we are going to use the mean of today is greater than mean of three years ago. Hence, the variable one becomes mean of this data set for today. So, oops. And then variable 2 becomes 3 years ago. There's no hypothesized mean difference. Labels, we select that the count is 0 0.05 and we choose this one. There you go. Now all we need to do is uh, write the other steps. So we have already written the claim, so since this is the claim, this is automatically our HA. If the mean of today is greater than the mean three years ago. Therefore, the age shows that the mean of today is less than or equal to the mean three years ago. Now, in the event that three years ago is what you've chosen to be variable one, this is, then this is how you should write it. H O, uh, if three, uh, yeah, let's write it first. The mean of three years ago is greater than or equal to the mean of today, and the HA would have become the mean of three years ago is less than the mean of today. If three years ago became variable one. So in this case, it's not. Our variable one is the mean of today. That's why we choose this, uh, this way of writing our HON, HA. So this is our steps B and C. Uh, by the way, the direction of this is that it's a one tail upper tail. One tail upper tail. With that in mind, we need to actually choose. Oops, let's get down. 
Let's do this. This one here. So if we go down, the mean for two tailed. Oops. The mean for two tailed is this one. So for our oops. So we have for step four the p value of zero point one three two sixty is compared to the alpha of zero point seven five. Obviously, this is bigger, and therefore we have failed to reject H O. Thus, the conclusion would be there is no sufficient sufficient evidence to reject each O. Thus, no sufficient evidence to reject each O. Thus, the mean of today is less than or equal to the mean three years ago. So, let's go to so, the next example. Oops. So, there, at a the recent PGA tournament, the Honda Classic at Palm Beach, Garden, Florida, the following were posted for eight randomly selected golfers for two consecutive days. At alpha equals 0.05 is there evidence of a difference in the mean scores for the two days. Pause the video and then try to perform the test of dependent samples for this problem. Alright, so assuming we have done that. So let's go on to data analysis. Test for example by two means. Since it did not actually say which day first, uh, which day would you like to be the first one, it's just by uh, the usual that Thursday comes first before Friday, so let's do that. So let's see that Thursday as our variable 1, Friday as our variable 2, then multiply the 6 points, output the 0 0.5, output page, just put it here, and there we go. So now, since the claim is that the, there is a difference in the mean scores for the two days, we can now say that for our first step, our claim, the mean for Thursday is different for the mean for Friday, and that ends up our each day. So the mean is that the mean, ah, the HO rather, is that the mean of Thursday is equal to the mean of Friday. Making this a two-tailed test. So this is our steps two and three. So if we go to step four, the mean for two-tailed is this. 0 0.0467 is, although it's rounded up to 0 0.05, it's still not 0 0.05. It's still less than. 0 0.05. Hence, we have rejected HO. Therefore, our conclusion is that there is there is sufficient evidence to reject HO. Thus, the mean score for Thursday is not the same as the mean score for Friday. And that is the test of dependent means.